So in this video, I'm going to provide an introduction to determinants. I think for some of you, you may have already seen determinants in another context, but I hope this will provide another way of thinking about them. So to start off with, the determinant is an operation that takes as inputs square matrices and gives an output as a number. So here we have our examples of A and B, and they are both square matrices, right? So over here we have our A, which is a three by three matrix, and B is a two by two matrix. And my claim is that the determinant is well-defined for every square matrix. So in this case, we can talk about the determinant of A as, as a number that results from this matrix. And in this case, the determinant is 101, and the determinant of this matrix over here on the right, B, is seven. And we're not gonna worry about how these numbers were computed for the moment. What this serves to illustrate is that the determinant is an operation that takes as inputs square matrices and outputs numbers. So now I'm gonna be a, a bit more specific about what I mean by taking matrices into numbers. So we can think of the set of all n by n matrices, which we can denote by mnz, as the set of all n by n matrices, so here this denotes all n by n matrices with integer coefficients. And so what this means is that the determinant is a map that takes matrices with integer coefficients and maps it to an integer. And likewise, we can say that for the set of all n by n matrices with real coefficients, the determinant is going to be some real number. And analogously, it's, it's gonna be a similar scenario with matrices with complex elements. And actually, this, this is something that pops up in quantum mechanics. And that's, that's a physical scenario where the quantities represented are complex numbers, and so you need complex matrices. And so if you were to take a determinant of a complex matrix, you would end up with a complex number. But we're not going to worry about the real and complex cases for this video. All of the examples of determinants I'm going to go over are going to have integer coefficients. So let's move on to the geometric intuition of determinants. So the Soviet mathematician Vladimir Arnold provides the following definition. He says, the determinant of a matrix is an oriented volume of a parallel pipette whose edges are its columns. So I really like this geometric intuition. I think it captures a lot of what a determinant is. So let, let's be practical and let, let's go ahead and, and try to make use of this interpretation uh, for, our matri for our matrix B, which we, uh, we had earlier was just a two by two matrix with the following entry. So let's apply this geometric intuition to this two by two example. So what we're gonna do is we're going to associate each column of this matrix to a vector and construct a parallelogram spanned by these two vectors. So to start off with, we're just gonna draw our X and Y axis, right? Because we're working in the case of a two-dimensional context. And we're gonna take our vector V1, which is going to be four, negative seven, which will give us this vector here. And our vector v2 is simply the unit vector in the x direction, giving us this v2. Now, all that remains to get the determinant is to complete this parallelogram and ask the question of what is the volume, in this case area, because it's two-dimensional, of this parallelogram. And so for this, we can get, just to simply use the formula for the area of a parallelogram, which is equal to the base times the height. And in this case, we can see that the height of this parallelogram is seven and the base is one, right? Because it's the, this is the unit vector here, one zero. So we're gonna get in this case, one times seven, which of course is just seven. So the determinant of this matrix B is equal to seven and if you'll note back to the definition, this is a signed volume. So depending on the orientation of the vectors, you may pick up a plus or minus on the determinant. So for this next example, 
I'm going to show a three-dimensional case where I've chosen the numbers such that, you know, it's easy to draw and visualize what's going on here. So in the three-dimensional case, it's, it's the same type of understanding. In this case, we have three vectors, right? We have V1, V2, and V3, which are formed from the columns of this matrix. And we're going to construct what would be known as a parallelopiped. So now we're thinking about a volume as the interpretation of the determinant. So in this case, we can start off with our V1, which is going to be uh, this vector here. Kind of think of it intersecting at the points 1 and 1, right? Because our vector is 1, 1, 0. And then our, just to draw in our V2 and V3 vectors, we're going to get the following unit vectors, right? We're going to get V2 as a unit vector in the y direction and V3 as the unit vector uh, in the z direction. So then finally what remains is to, again, complete this parallelogram, although in this case it's a parallelopiped because we're working in three dimensions, and we get the following volume. So you can kind of think of it as this slanted cube. And so now the question of the determinant is simply a matter of finding out what is the volume of this slanted cube. And so just, just using some geometry, we can make the argument that the volume of this is going to be equal to the area of whatever this base is times the height. And so in this case, we can again, you know, just use our formula for the area of a parallelogram to say, well, this parallelogram here has a base and a height, which are each one. And the height of this is also one. So in this context, the determinant of this matrix C is equal to one. And again, I've chosen the vectors such that we don't have to worry about the, the plus or minus on this determinant. So now I'm going to take a bit of a different approach, and I'm going to show you how to actually compute these determinants in practice. Because this geometric intuition is important, although it's not a very useful way of computing them in practice. So in this last part of the video, I'm going to show how to actually compute these determinants using a technique called cofactor expansion. So cofactor expansion is a recursive technique, and if you're familiar with recursion in programming, it's where we take some base case, which in this case is going to be n equals 2. We have a two-dimensional matrix, and we're just going to give the determinant explicitly using the following formula. So the determinant of a general 2 by 2 matrix, so the determinant of D, is going to be equal to AD minus BC. And kind of how I, I just remember this as a shorthand is I multiply the elements of the main diagonal and then subtract off the off diagonal. So we're going to have AD minus BC. So what this means is we can now just immediately compute all of our two by two determinants using this formula. So if we go back to our example of our matrix B from earlier, where we have our matrix 4, 1, negative 7, 0, we're going to get that the determinant of this matrix, so det B, is going to be 4 times 0 minus 1 times negative 7. And in this case, we simply get 7, which was the value of the determinant that we got using the geometric intuition, right? So there's a correspondence here. So now that we have our base case for n equals 2, we can recursively define what the determinant is for n equals 3 and so on. So recursion is a very useful technique in mathematics, right? Because we can break up a larger problem into tractable subproblems. So I'm going to show how this recursive technique works on the matrix that we saw earlier, which is given by the following entries. So we have our way of computing determinants for two by two matrices. And so what we do for the determinant, and I'm just going to use this notation uh, to show determinants. Often when you're taking a determinant of a matrix and you see just these straight lines, this indicates that you're taking a determinant as opposed to the regular square back brackets where it's simply a matrix. So in this case, what you do is you go along the first row of our matrix. So 
we select out each of our entries on the top row and we associate each of these entries to a two by two matrix which we have the formula for the determinant so here we're going to take one which is our element in this position and then we're going to form a two by two determinant from these entries here and so this gives us one one on the main diagonal and we'll be taking this determinant then we're going to take the next entry and we're going to take zero because it's the entry in the second position and then we're going to form a two by two determinant that's basically just formed by deleting the middle row right the row associated to this entry here and taking the following determinant so we're going to have one zero zero one which is the determinant formed by deleting this row and taking the ones over here so then what we're going to have is finally we have we're going to have our third entry which is zero and the determinant which is going to be again using this technique of deleting the row of the entry that we're looking at so in this case and i'll just redraw this to make it a bit clearer and so the determinant that we're going to be looking at here is going to be the determinant of this two by two sub matrix right because we're just deleting the entries here and taking this two by two matrix so what this gives us is the determinant of one one zero zero and finally you have to insert alternating signs uh, so in this case we have a minus sign and a plus sign so you start off always in the first uh, entry with a positive sign then you go to the second one you alternate the sign and you subtract off this determinant and then on the third entry we're again back at positive positive. and if this was a four by four case we would be breaking this down into three by three determinants which would then be broken down into two by two determinants so everything is defined recursively so in order to calculate these determinants we're basically already done because we have a scalar multiplied by some determinant which is also a scalar but in this case we're multiplying zero by whatever these determinants are and so we don't actually have to compute these determinants because well they're whatever they are they're being multiplied by zero so and in this case only the first entry is going to be a non-zero quantity so we have one and then just using our two by two formula where we take our main diagonal entries so one times one subtracted by zero times zero and so what we recover is one which again to complete this correspondence with the volume interpretation is the volume of the parallel pipette spanned by these three vectors i hope this gives a useful way of looking at and computing determinants and as always i wish you the best of luck in your studies in mathematics